in electrical engineering, one of the founding members of WNCG. He was the director of WNCG for a number of years. I would say that many of you know him. And uh, he and Todd will uh, tell us about a new initiative that, uh, that is coming out of WNCG. Robert. All right, thank you. It's, uh, it's great to be here, as always, at the Texas Wireless Summit. And I'm thrilled to, to tell you about our new initiative called Situation Aware Vehicular Engineering Systems, or SAVES for short. So the, many of you have been coming to the summit for, for years now, and you know that we have a world-class uh, research group here, Wireless Networking Communications Group, with expertise in wireless networking communications, data, signal processing. But you might not know that we also have another center at the University of Texas at Austin that has, among other things, an outstanding logo that looks just like a bouncing ball, just like ours. But uh, in all seriousness, it's called the Center for Transportation Research. It's a world-class transportation facility. It's actually been around for more than 50 years now, so quite a few longer than the WNCG. They look at transportation, traffic modeling, policy, and planning. They have um, around 170 graduate students and more than 20 faculty involved and many researchers as well. And so, as a result, we think at UT that we are very well positioned to exploit this um, emerging interconnection between wireless and transportation. And in fact, with the first two presentations this morning, mostly I just need to say, see Qualcomm presentation, and I'm basically done. But I'm going to continue just for a few more slides here in case it, some of you weren't here this morning and to see those outstanding um, presentations. So why this makes sense here? Well, you know, we're the wireless group. We love wireless. Transportation people, of course, love transportation and cars and airplanes and trucks. Well, 5G is also developing a love for transportation through this automotive industry vertical. Now, there's many ways you can look at this, but, you know, I, I see that the cellular industry is thinking, hmm, you know, if everyone has a cell phone, how do we sell more cell phones? Sell them to, ah, let's sell them to machines. Let's sell them to cars. Um, I mean, it's coming, and I think it is, as we've seen, a really worthwhile application because unlike a lot of these other, um, let's say, media and entertainment, I mean, there's definitely value in people being able to entertain themselves more efficiently, but uh, I think that, you know, when you're talking to your, maybe your parents, or your grandmother that doesn't know anything about technology, and you, you say, I'm making Facebook work better, um, you know, you might get the question, well, what is Facebook? Uh, but if you say, you know, I'm, I'm reducing collisions, you know, I'm making the commute faster, I mean, that, that really has an appeal for, for many people. So, um, and so this is now being recognized as a strategic area for cellular communication industry. Now, the basic reason is that connectivity makes um, all the automated aspects of driving more efficient. And, and so if you have the ability to exchange high data rates, we can share the sensing data that we've, we've seen already, the, the images, the radar, even LIDAR. Uh, we can share that data, and we don't have to process it. So instead of relying on the car in front of me to do some deep learning algorithm and identify the pixels and find a pedestrian, it can just ship that data back and my you know, fine Honda machine can run the deep learning algorithm itself and make that decision for itself based on more data than it otherwise would have collected. And so that's something we can do with high data rates. And of course, to make that happen, we need connectivity between cars. Now, the second thing that we also saw in the previous presentation I mean, is, is low latency. I mean, you, you, maybe you don't need gigabits per second for this application, but things like safety critical messages, um, you know, there's an accident in the intersection, you might want to slow down, someone's crossing the street. Um, that information needs only a few bits, but must be delivered in a very timely fashion. And this is also a very interesting aspect of connectivity. So high data rates, low latency, and of course, everything in between. And uh, naturally, this is uh, what we are interested in, in pursuing here. Now, why, why do we want to do this? I mean, so sensing is really a huge part of um, the automated driving experience here. So this, this I, I have to confess, is provided by, by uh, Todd Humphreys here. You know, he's more cultured than me. Anyone that knows us both will realize that. And this is an early um, Picasso Cubist painting here. So Cubism is about exploring the world from multiple perspectives. And he sent me this photo, and I'm looking at this like, oh, this is you know, Todd hum classic Todd Humphrey's email. I can't understand anything here. But I mean, I looked at it for a while, and I was like, actually, that's a city seen from multiple perspectives. You know, and if you think about automated driving, I mean, that's actually what we want, except that we also want to see where the cars and the people are in that multiple perspectives. So sensing 
and with these multiple perspectives is really critical and that's a main motivation for communication. And the other thing I want to mention is that even though a lot of times we're imagining the cars talking directly to each other, I think that there's a big role for infrastructure to play. In particular, infrastructure can be high up and so it can allow you to see um, the environment and give you better situational awareness than you might see when you're in a small car behind a big truck and you just can't see what's going on there. So I think there's, a, there's also a role to play for sensing at the infrastructure as well as communication at the infrastructure and communication and sensing on the vehicles. Now, one of the biggest challenges we have is, is perception. So this is uh, provided by, I think this was Bentley here. And if you talk to a lot of people that are not working in the field, they, uh, they imagine that like two years from now, we're all gonna be driving around in a, in a Bentley, there's gonna be a virtual butler, and we're drinking champagne on the way to work, ideally on the way home from work, I should say. Um, <laughs> depends on your work day. But I, I think as we've seen already, I mean, it, it's not clear that we're there. We're, we're not clear that we're anywhere close to being there. You know, the, the Tesla is the classic example. Everyone's like, oh, but Tesla has autopilot, it drives itself. Well, apparently if you take your hands off the wheel, it stops driving itself. So it's kind of debatable if it's driving itself if you have to have your hands on the wheel. Uh, and there's other news articles about, you know, self-driving hype doesn't reflect reality, or self-driving cars are here, but that doesn't mean that they don't have a driver, which is you. So. <laughs> Um, we have a long way to go, and so I think that even though the area I feel like is really hyped right now, maybe overhyped even, I think that this is actually the time to come in and double down on the investment and really start looking at uh, what can wireless do in the space here. So, you know, I mean, what are the key technical challenges? Well, I mean, there's, um, there's three things here. So, I mean, there's com the communication piece, which is, you know, we need to be able to enable higher data rates. We need to be able to... Uh, perform you know, the sensing, collect data from all kinds of different sensors, combine them together, ship them around. And we also need the means to process that data and extract the critical information you know, from these multiple data sources and do it in a way that's timely and that accounts for that. Some of the sensors may not be working or the weather may be bad or there may be you know, latency issues. So there's a lot of uh, issues in all three of these, these areas here. And this has led us to to create the SAVES Center. And so UT SAVES, it's, it's officially, it's an initiative. So it's, um, it's part of the Wireless Networking Communications Group, but it's being developed in conjunction for the, with the Center for Transportation Research. And, and there we have, um, so is Chandra here, Chandra Bhatt? Yes, yeah, Chandra's in the back there, so stand up for a second, Chandra here. So Chandra's the director of CTR here. And we've been collaborating with Chandra and uh, through the Texas Department of Transportation. So uh, Darren Jensen, are you here? Darren is right there in front of him there. And so Darren has been funding several projects with uh, different folks in the wireless group that um, have allowed us to you know, come together and to really start to think and, ans and they ask tough questions about you know, safety and communication. And, and this, is a, this has really shown us that this is such an important area and there's so many intriguing questions to be answered here so that we've created this initiative around that with, with their support here. And so the, the, the three pillars are communication, so we want to make higher rates, lower latency, sensing, we want to look at developing better sensor technologies, fusing the sensor data, and then finally analytics. So we want to be able to combine the sensor data together, but we also want to have the opportunity to make data available for folks like TxDOT or for like cities so that they can manage the transportation network better so that our commute times go down. So not only is it safer, but we spend less time you know, going somewhere and more time working when we get there. And this has uh, all been possible through three founding partners, Toyota, ITC, Huawei, and National Instruments. And so these are corporate sponsors of the WNCG who have pitched in extra funding and support to, to get this center off the ground. Now, just a little bit of background. Let me just check the time here. I'm sure I've gone. Oh, yeah, I didn't start my timer. That was perfect. Yeah, so I, it looks like I have 10 minutes left, apparently. Um, I have a couple minutes left before I turn it over to Todd here. Um, so Toyota ITC Info Technology Center, they're in Mountain View, and they're interested in you know, the interface between and they're in particular interested in you know, working with us and understanding uh, wireless networking positioning, but also how 5G and VTX might play a role in automated driving. We are looking at them right now at an interesting problem. Maybe some of you saw the poster 
on inverse fingerprinting. So we're, we're trying to use position information acquired from DSRC to help us configure a high data rate millimeter wave link more efficiently. Uh, so that's some, some cool technology there that I don't think I have time to go into details on, but it's, uh, it turns out that if you use this in combination, you can make the millimeter wave operate much more efficiently. Uh, Huawei is, uh, needs hopefully no introduction, leading cellular infrastructure, handset network, and cloud provider. I think they made more than $35 billion this past year, or maybe it was 38. I kind of lost track after it reached the many billions. Um, but they're interested in integrating communication and transportation infrastructure. And so there, you know, we're in particular trying to understand what's the connection between safety, traffic efficiency, and the infrastructure. And so we're looking at a project right now. This is in collaboration with, with Chandra Bhatt, and we're also leveraging some of the other experience that we're, we're gaining in the, our TechStot CarStot project, where we're trying to understand you know, if I have a gigabit per second, how can we translate that into, you know, lives saved, re reductions in collisions, improvements in efficiency here? And we're doing that through a combination of understanding how to simulate cellular systems and simulate transportation systems. And finally, National Instruments. Uh, so National Instruments is an Austin company, the leading test and measurement company. They work in testing hardware, software. They actually have a huge effort now in uh, automated driving as well as in 5G. And so they're looking to leverage our expertise in signal processing and software-defined radio. So we have a, I don't know um, if you saw it here up on the, the poster level there, but we had a demo this morning of National Instruments' new radar target emulator. And so we're able to test off-the-shelf radars and create different uh, environments in which you can create synthetic targets. And, and this is key to understanding how radar works. And so we're working on a project to characterize the latency in these networks. And that's really important because you, you do all this stuff, we're gonna do millimeter wave, millisecond latencies, but then if it takes 100 milliseconds for the radar data to get into the ECU, it's kind of pointless to, to minimize the latency elsewhere, right? So that's uh, what we're working on here with some advanced technology there. So now on the last um, negative two minutes, I'm gonna turn it over to Todd Humphreys. You can just stay there, Robert. We'll, yeah. uh, we'll tag team this. Okay, here you go. <laughs> Uh, you might have noticed that when Robert introduced the three pillars of the SAVE centers, they were the same three pillars as the Texas Wireless Summit theme today, the com communication, oh, what a coincidence. sensing, wow. and data that's analytics. That's because he sent me an early prospectus for SAVEs, and I said, bingo, that's what we're going to do our Texas Wireless Summit on. Uh, so he talked about some of the projects that he's leading. Of course, uh, Robert is the kind of person who could shoulder an entire center himself between him and his research army, but there are other professors involved and who want to be more involved in, in saves. Uh, uh, I, I, really? And I'm one of them. There, there's a, yeah. Huh. I thought this was for me. Wait, wait a uh, second here. <laughs> big pie, big pie here. We can all have a piece. Um, we're working on precise positioning. You heard Sanjeev Nanda this morning talk about the, the necessity for precise positioning, both in V to V, V to X, and, and also just for the, the perception problem, being able to interpret your surroundings. And we're looking at ways to fuse visual data with uh, carrier phase differential GNSS data so that we can get high reliability decimeter accurate positioning. Our current experiences have been <clears throat> uh, showing us that if we use multiple antennas on the vehicle, if we use multiple frequencies. MIMO? MIMO? That's right, that's, oh, okay. that's a Just type checking. of MIMO. Ah. Uh, yeah. And if you have a dense reference network so that you can eliminate the effects of the ionosphere, and then later, if you couple at a low level, a tight coupling with vision, you can get the robustness you need at the 10 centimeter level. Uh, this has been work funded by Samsung, one of the WNCG affiliates, and we hope to take this forward as part of the SAVE Center. It was also facilitated by the Texas Department of Transportation, who allowed us to put these reference network nodes that we've put in Austin, about a dozen of them, on Texas Department of Transportation facilities. So thank you, TxDOT, for that. This could in, uh, usher in new modes of of driving in an aided sense. Instead of just turning the car over fully to autonomy, we think of the autonomy as helping out where we fail, where our attention span is too short. So you can imagine painting road directions in a heads-up display instead of having to look down at your phone or listen to your phone as you're ha trying to have other conversations. And we'd like to introduce last moment lane keeping. Instead of introducing uh, lane keeping early on as in uh, the Tesla vehicle where you can take your hands off the wheel, we want the driver to be fully empowered. And only at the last moment, only, only when it becomes obvious that you're going across the lane, does the, does the car nudge you back. 
So it's just a guardian angel. It's not trying to take over your responsibility and lull you into watching Harry Potter. Um, up here, we have some of the other professors at, who are part of the WNTG and others who are not part of WNTG who are looking to contribute to saves. Al Bovic is a video expert and look, uh, wants to do 2D and 3D surround view for automated driving. Professor Edison Thomas uh, is, is one of our um, latest hires into the, in, into the uh, uh, the Cockrell School of Engineering, and he's going to look at haptic sensing, at feedback from the, from the, from the vehicle, so that humans and the vehicles can sort of talk to each other in, in modes that we aren't currently explo exploiting. We also have Gustavo de Vesiana. He's looking at collaborative sensing and obstructed operational scenarios. Uh, Professor, Professor Joydeep Ghosh, software learning agents in vehicles and infrastructure. And then Robert again, prototyping millimeter wave communication and sensing. And uh, uh, Professor Edison again, uh, Vehicle, uh, within vehicle situational awareness and human sensing and modeling. Then Jodeep Ghosh again, machine learning for personalized dri driver assist. And then uh, Eddie and, and I are working on security for connected vehicles uh, using game theory to manage the risks involved. So we've got a lot of people lining up to do more projects in this area. And we're looking to increase the number of affiliates of the SAVE Center so that we can fund all of the students required to do this exciting work. Uh, I'll go ahead and turn questions over. To the, to the audience, and you can ask questions only of, of Robert. <laughs> <laughs> yes, go ahead and, and shout it out there. Yeah, I think, that's a, I think that's a good question. We have some related work that's happening there that involves the fusion. So when I'm talking about fusion, part of that is understanding the answers to those questions. And I, and I think um, we're in a good position to do more work there, should you be interested in, in sponsoring such a project, with some of my colleagues, not just with me. <laughs> it's a challenging question. I mean, we're talking about safety of life here, and if some other vehicle is making a claim through the V2V system, about being around a blind corner and, and barreling toward you at a high rate of speed. Do you trust that claim? Do you require that the infrastructure or your own sensing verify the claim before you can trust it? And if so, then what use is V to V if you cannot trust it until you've verified it with an independent system? And, and so th th these are difficult questions, but the security of V to V and V to X is, is one that we're going to definitely be looking at. Yeah, go ahead. Are you taking any new uh, ap approaches to fusion? Because today fusion is done, like let's say between radar and camera at a very high level. They correlate the two decisions. But when you go up the stack from the raw data, say in radar glints or in camera pixels, you're making so many assumptions when you get to the, the result that if you fuse at the higher level, you're confounding the information. So it's important to fuse at the lower levels, but that requires new approaches, both in architecture and algorithms. Uh, yes. <laughs> Amen. Yeah, so, so we are. Uh, I think Jordi Ghosh, one of, one of our collaborators, is, has been working on that and is in a good position to answer. But I mean, Al Bovic, many of us are looking at that. But I think, yeah, I mean, really, if we can expose that lower level of data, we can start exploring more sophisticated algorithms. And so that's kind of the premise behind, I want to allow people to share that lower level data, and then I want some other people to come in and figure out what to do with it. And so I think we're going to do that. We'll have to call it quits there, but we've got the panel session coming up. If you'd like to talk with Robert about saves afterward, I'm sure he'd uh, love to talk your ear off. Let's thank him again for, for, the, for the presentation. All right, thank you.